let's discuss this example so in this example we have to prove that every closed sphere or every closed ball is a closed set this thing we have to prove okay so let us start with a matrix space let xd be a matrix space let xd be a matrix space let x belongs to capital x be any point and r be a positive real number which is obviously a radius of closed ball okay so this is matrix space xd right we have taken one point x and radius r so that's why we will have a closed ball like this then then closed ball which is nothing but closed pair huh closed pair both of them are same is so we denote in this way b x r we denote in this way and its definition is x belongs to capital x such that d of so here y i will take d of x y less than or equal to r see in a open ball we have strictly less than r but in a closed ball we have less than or equal to r so this is a closed ball and we have to prove that it is closed set in matrix space xd i will clearly mention to prove that b x r is closed in xd tell me what is the technique to prove that any set is closed only one technique simply we have to prove its complement is open then we can declare it is a closed set so here here also our target is to prove that x minus b x r is open in x d okay tell me how to prove a complement or any set is open we take any arbitrary point and we try to find open ball around it which entirely lies inside a set then we can declare it is a open set i will follow the same technique so see for that purpose i am taking a belongs to x minus b x r b any arbitrary point i have taken one arbitrary point i will show you in a diagram suppose there is one point a now i should find one open ball around a which entirely lies in complement of this closed ball okay c implies c x sorry a lies in complement of this ball that means 100% a does not belongs to this closed ball okay a belongs to complement of ball so therefore a does not belongs to this closed ball so that's why it does not belongs to this ball so that's why it will not satisfy this condition it means it means distance of x and a is greater than r you are getting a lies outside this ball so that's why distance between x and a is greater than radius of that ball after that what will i do i will shift dxa on that side oh, sorry r on this side so dxa minus r greater than 0 okay what i have done i have simply shifted r on this side r was positive so if you shift it here it will be negative i will call it as r1 let r1 is equal to dxa minus r that means i will show you in diagram ha huh? this is distance between x and a distance between x and a what we are doing we are subtracting r we are subtracting r that means this radius then remaining part getting this remaining part is radius r1 clearly clearly our r1 is positive because already we have written dxa minus r is positive so therefore r1 is also positive so now my claim my claim is open ball with center a radius r1 is subset of x minus b x r what it means that means this open ball with center a and radius r getting this open ball with center a and radius r1 entirely lies in complement of 
BXR complement that means in the remaining part of BXR this thing this is our claim this is we have to prove okay but see uh, what will I do how to prove one set is subset of other we take one point from this set and we prove that it is belongs to the second set so that's why we say the first set is subset of other okay so I will follow the same technique let P belongs to B A R1 I have taken one point P. I have taken one point P belongs to this open ball with center A and radius R1. See, as you can see here, there is no more space to write. So I suggest you to make a screenshot of it and then we will go further. See, we have taken point P belongs to this ball. So that means distance of P from A is less than R1. See, P lies in this ball with center A and radius R1. So that's why distance of A and P is obviously less than its radius, which is R1. But do you remember what is R1? Yeah, you remember now R1, definition of R1, definition of R1 is dxA minus R. I had shown here in the diagram also, getting now. So R1 means what? Distance between X and A minus this radius R. So we get a R1. This is our R1. So that means DEA less than DXA minus R. Now what will I do? I am shifting this R on this side. R is negative. If you shift it here, it will be positive. And I am shifting this term to that side. So therefore, what will happen? It will be positive. And if you shift this DPA on that side, it will be negative DPA. So very important statement inequality we have got. So I'm calling it as star inequality number star. Okay. See, uh, you remember triangle inequality. We have already studied at the beginning of this subject getting. So by triangle inequality, I can write by triangle inequality. What can I write by triangle inequality? Let me write that thing said so dxa less than or equal to dxp plus dpa distance between x and a is uh, less than or equal to distance between x and p plus distance between p and a so this is a triangle inequality for any three uh, points you can use it okay after that what will i do i will try to bring this term here okay i'm trying to bring this term here dxa we have yes dpa dpa is on that side so i will shift it shift it on this side so it will be negative so therefore dxa minus dpa will be less than or equal to dxp this is inequality number double star so you are guessing it's correct my target is to use star and double star simultaneously getting See, dr is less than dxa minus dpa, dxa minus dpa less than or equal to dxp. So if I combine these two, what will I get from? So let me remove this part. Okay, it is not required now. Okay. From star and double star. What we will get from star and double star R less than this one and this one is less than A less than B, B less than C. So obviously A less than C. So this is DXP. Getting that means distance of X and P is greater than, is greater than radius. Getting. So therefore, therefore, this P does not belong to this closed ball having center X and radius R. See, P does not lie in a ball. That means P lies in its complement. Okay. Suppose I am not present. I am I'm not in Maharashtra. So obviously I am outside, outside the Maharashtra. So same thing. I am lying in the complement of Maharashtra. So same thing is here. So if I say P does not belong to this ball, that means 101% P is lying in a complement of that ball. See. So therefore P belongs to X minus BXR. Okay. So basically... Just a minute, I am concluding now. Basically, we had taken point P from a ball with center A and radius R1. And finally, we proved P belongs to X minus BXR. P belongs to this ball implies P belongs to that set. That means 101% we can say 
therefore this ball open ball with center a and radius r1 subset of x minus bxr getting so see but the point a was arbitrary point so that means this is true for each point a of this set so therefore we can declare it is a open set x minus bxr is open so if complement is open you can set the set bxr is a closed set so that's why we can say every closed ball or every closed sphere is a closed set so we will write all these things so make a screenshot of it then we'll go further so therefore x minus bxr is a sorry yeah it's a is an open set is an open set getting so it is an open set so that's why its complement is closed set so implies bxr is a closed set getting so it is a closed set so that's why we can declare every closed ball or every closed sphere is a closed set so therefore simply i will write the last sentence therefore every closed ball or a sphere huh or sphere is a closed set so in this way we have completed this example you can make a screenshot of it after that we will stop thank you bye bye